Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this week's video. In this week's video, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at uh, decals uh, and mainly for bullet holes. Uh, this is quite a simple system to set up, um, but it can add quite uh, the sort of like feedback or effect for your game. So as you can see, I've shot a couple of bullet holes here, um, and these are these are decals. So they're essentially just images or textures um, painted into the world. Now they are dynamic, so if you do shoot them onto a physics object and then move the objects, they will stick, so they'll stay with the object. Um, you can set up a live time, I've set mine to 10 seconds, so you should start to see that these have disappeared. Uh, and they do tend to wrap around corners, so if you do hit something on the corner, it will wrap around the object, which is pretty cool. Uh, this video was intended to be a little bit longer, as I was going to include some footsteps as well. Um, but that doesn't work as smoothly as I'd like with the FPS template. Um, I've got it to work fine on a third person, so I might split that out in a second video. But really, I want to get both FPS and third person to work seamlessly. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, let's get in and let's create the bullet holes. Okay, so to start with, you do need a bullet hole texture. Now, these are actually really simple to find and uh, similar to other textures. You can just type in bullet hole transparent onto Google and you, you'll find plenty of these. Now, a lot of them are sometimes having white backgrounds like this. That isn't a complete problem, but the, the transparent ones are usually a little bit better. Now, this one may be a picture with a transparent background, which you'll need to go to the website and download it. Um, once you've got that, you just need to um, import it into your game. So you just right click import to game and select the downloaded file or vice versa. You can drag that file into into your um, into the engine or content browser and it should import that way. Now uh, you can see here that I've, I've got the shoe print here. I just want to open up the shoe print because this does apply to this. Uh, this had a completely white background and the reason that I said it, it doesn't necessarily matter is because it, as you can see here I've just uh, disabled the feature. Uh, this has got a white background but we want to remove the white from behind it. Um, in the adjustments on the right hand side there is a chroma key texture um, feature which when you select that and pick the color you want to chroma key out. Uh, so now I've selected black for example and hit OK it removes that part of the image for you. So if you've got a white background, just select the white background here with the little dabber, uh, hit OK and it'll remove that background for you. So if you do get one with um, a white background, it's not the end of the world. Um, however, if you was to do the same with a black background, it may remove the black from the center of the bullet hole and therefore the bullet sort of hole might not look the same. So therefore I've got this one with a transparent background already added, so I've not needed to chroma key anything out. Anyway, that being said, once you've got your bullet hole, uh, you will need to make a bullet hole material. So to do that, we want to right click and create material, and we'll call this bullet hole. Double click that to get into it. Now I'm just going to create a little bit of space here, there's no reason for that other than my OCD a little bit. Uh, select bullet hole and on the left hand side under the material we want to change the material domain from a surface to a deferred decal and also I just want to select the uh, the plane um, sort of preview just so I can get a better, better view of this. Um, and I'm also going to change the blend mode from opaque to translucent and I'm going to drag in the alpha from the texture sample into the opacity and you should see now that only your bullet appears. So with that being done, hit save. Uh, for me this usually takes just a couple of minutes. Okay, so once that's saved, I'm gonna go back to my first person example map and open up my content drawer. And I'm actually gonna use the FP, I keep calling it FP because it is in the previous version, the BP rifle. So I'm not actually going to put this on my character, I'm going to put this directly into the rifle so it has nothing to do with the character at all and the rifle hands, handles its own logic. So we'll double click that and we'll get into it. So if you've never been into this before, essentially you've got a couple of things here. Um, if the character walks into it, it attaches it to your player uh, and then once the character presses fire, 
um, it spawns the projectile. Now that's fine, um, that's absolutely fine. You can manipulate this system to work with the projectile, however, um, we're not going to. Um, I'm going to create a line trace system. Very basic and very uh, quick and easy. I'm just going to do line trace whoop, line trace by channel, line trace by channel. Oh, and make sure to disconnect this other branch because we don't want to do um, all this as well. So I'm just going to double click, create a reroute node, just so it tidies up a bit. So on fire projectile, we're going to create a line trace. Now, how we're going to start this line trace is we are going to get player camera manager. And essentially, this is going to take us as the player index zero and get the camera that's associated to our character. And the reason I want to do that is because we're on an FPS, it will take sort of as our eyes are essentially the camera, it'll take our view and look into the world. So from the camera manager, I'm just going to get actor location. And just to get a starting point and for an end point, I'm going to get forward uh, vector at the top, get actor forward vector. I'm going to add, sorry, no, no, I'm going to multiply and I'm going to change this bottom pin to a float. And essentially, I'm just adding some distance to, um, I'm going to get our forward vector and add a distance to it to get a, a point in the distance in front of us. So I'm going to say 3000 for this. Oh, that's 300, uh, 3000. One thing if you didn't know, if you type in free and then free K and press enter, that'll convert it to 3000, which it actually hasn't, which is annoying. Never mind. I forget I said that. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to add um, our original location and our future location together to make the end location. I'm going to set a draw debug type of for duration. I'm going to drop down this line trace and I'm going to set the draw time to 0.5 seconds. I don't want it on the screen long. Now, this is where the decal actually comes into it a little bit. Um, so from the out location, we want to break hit result. So this will only call when we hit something um, or it'll call anywhere, but this will only matter if we hit something. And then what we want to do is we want to um, spawn decal attached. So there's two options at location and attached. Attached will make sure it sticks to whatever you've shot. So if you have um, shot a physics actor and you move the actor around, it will follow them. However, if you do location, it won't. It will literally um, spawn in that place where the physics object is. And as soon as the object moves, the decal will essentially stay floating. So just be aware of that. If you're only going to use this to hit static objects like walls and stuff that never move, then you could use location. With that being said, let's select our decal material, which should be bullet hole. And then for the decal size, you can play with it a little bit. Um, I'm going to go for 10, 10 and 10. Bear in mind, if you do make these numbers not equal, uh, so for example, 10, 20 and then 30, um, the decal size will look strange, uh, but you can play with that. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, the attach to component. So that's going to be the component that we hit. So we can drag off that, hit component. Um, if you have got a particular bone name that you want to attack, attach to, um, for for whatever reason, um, you can do that. I don't I don't think I'd ever need to do that. I can't imagine. Anyway, um, location. I'm going to go for the location that we've hit, and for rotation, if we take the impact normal, and we do a, an x vector from this. So essentially the impact normal is um, where you hit, it will get the angle of what you've hit. So what, what is the angle of the, the thing that you've hit? And then from that, it can make a, a rotation. Plug that in. The location type we want to keep world position, lifespan. This is how long you want your decal to stay in the world. So just bear in mind that if you 
have it set to infinite, which I think maybe zero. Yep, infinite. Um, your decal will never run out. And essentially, if you've got an FPS game and it's quite fast pace, you're going to be spawning lots and lots of decal into the world. Uh, and that could drive up sort of like your render processing and, and ultimately slow your game down. So it's, it's probably advisable to have a lifespan. Um, I will go for five seconds in this instance. And that pretty much should be it. There's not really much more to it. Um, let's give it a try. So if we hit compile and hit play and we go pick up the gun, if we now fire, we can see that that bullet hole has landed on the wall and it looks absolutely fine. So let's shoot this physics object and then bump into it. We can see that they are all stuck to the cubes and they have disappeared after about five seconds. Okay, so I know this is a little bit backwards, but now we're going to move on to the projectile. Um, so if a line trace doesn't interest you, I just did that first because typically I use line traces more often than not. Uh, anyway, for the projectile, if we go to your content draw, and in the same folder as the, uh, the rifle, uh, we've also got the projectile. Now, the, if you open up the projectile, you'll notice that it actually handles its own hit events. So where the line trace, we needed to break the hit result from the line trace, the hit results essentially um, are already here within the projectile, just the way that it already works. Because what it does is it takes what it hits and adds an impulse to it. That's how it gets objects to move. Anyway, that being said, we've pretty much got everything we need already here. Um, now, what I like to do is... Um, is once we hit something is if we do a sequence node if we drag off one and then do a spawn decal um, we can select the attached and then we can pick our bullet hole our decal size I'm gonna again set as 10 10 and 10 now the attached component now luckily when we hit something the other component is used in this physics um, operation here of adding an impulse so we can just attach that to this node here uh, pretty neat the hit location we can just drag straight down here now if you want to make this look a bit nicer you can probably add in a few reroute nodes um, uh, just to tidy this up a little bit um, for rotation we want to take the hit normal and we want a, an x vector so we want to get the rotation from the x vector if you've just followed along with the line trace this is no different at all uh, and again if you want to make it look a bit neater because this is quite a busy area you can add a reroute node in there by double clicking and again let's move that up uh, and then for the lot location type we want to select key world position and again, I urge you to use a lifespan because um, having too many decals in the world may um, increase the or reduce your performance in your game. So I'm going to set 10. 10 is quite a long time, but um, it, it, that works. So that works fine. Now, the only thing you need to be aware of with projectiles is the bounce. So if we to test this now, and um, we shoot this wall up. Oh, my bad sorry i've not changed the um bp rifle from a line trace back to its original projectile um, so if you've not done the line trace don't worry about it that that won't have happened but uh, hit compile and play so if I, if I test this system now you'll see when i shoot that that decal applies as you'd expect now the problem is because it bounces Every time, every time it bounces and hits a wall, as you can see, two of them have hit each other there. It's just going to spawn decals everywhere. So, um, because these projectiles do eventually die out, what is probably a good idea is to add a do once node. Now you don't need to worry about the reset. Like I said, these these projectiles die out, so. Once they destroy themselves, or if the lifetime, the lifespan expires, uh, you won't, you won't ever need to reset this because we're just spawning a new one every time. So now, if we were to fire, uh, bounce it off that wall, it spawns the first time, but not the second time. 
Now, you could probably have this set up to do a number of times. So if, if you really, really, really did want to have sort of multiple bullet holes, you could do a do n. Um, where is it now? It's under, here we go, under floor control, uh, do n. So you could say, I want this to do two times. So now if I shoot, so I get one, a two, and where it bounced off over here, I do not get a third one. So you could use a do n uh, node if you did want to have multiple bounces register bullet holes, but if not, just use the do ones. And I hope that helped, and I'm going to pass back to myself now. I know that was really quick. I did speed through it quite a bit. Um, I didn't want to try and linger too much on stuff. Um, decals are really simple. Um, if you've got any other applications that you think decals can work in that you want me to go through, please leave a comment down below. I also appreciate feedback, so if you did, in, if that was useful for you, if you did enjoy it, please consider giving me a comment down below and let me know. Also, a like and a subscribe is also appreciated if that's what you want to do. Some social links down below if you want to chat with me in Discord, and that's pretty much it. So. That's it until next week. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.